Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Magic and Miracles, where you learn how to be the magician of your life. My name is Anna, and I'm your most favorite manifestation coach under the sun. Reason why there's no such coaching program like my coaching program, simply because I've designed it myself during the last eight years of me being a coach, um, seven years off of YouTube, and now over a year on YouTube, and because nobody but nobody spends as much time with and on their clients like I do. True story. Two to three times per week is the frequency with which I coach every single one of my clients. This frequency literally does not exist. This kind of hand-holding doesn't exist. This kind of coaching doesn't exist, okay? I really wanted to put something together for people um, who really need it and the kind of coaching I would have liked to receive myself when I first started looking for a coach 15 years ago. Most coaches see you once a week, uh, some even once a month. I don't believe in that for one second. If you're getting into coaching with me, be ready to communicate with me at least twice a week. Okay, whichever package you choose, whether that's audio exchange, Zoom sessions or phone sessions. Okay, I have different pricing for all packages because simply because it involves different amount of time on my end. And it's still very discounted based on my hourly rate. Um, every single package is discounted um, uh, appropriately. If before booking my coaching, you need to um, rendezvous with me for an hour, have a conversation, a session, tell me about yourself, your problems, um, and would like to make sure that the fit is right between you and I, I'm all for it. I can even apply that hour um, towards any package that you will choose. Um, and you will need um, to sign my coaching agreement. It's very self-explanatory, okay? Basically states I'm not a therapist, that you need to show up respectful, ready to work, that I'm very blunt and direct, that I do cur curse, swear in my coaching, okay? Not to disrespect anybody, but definitely to emphasize a point. You can also swear in coaching if you want to your heart's content. Um, in fact, I encourage self-expression in my coaching. And essentially, everything is confidential. Um, and the latest clause that I, I talked about um, just this morning is that uh, you are not um, allowed to take anything um, with you to start your own business based on the coaching that you've learned about in my coaching, okay, my coaching program. It's protected. It's copyright protected. I don't know how people don't know it, um, okay, uh, or I don't think that they can, you know, mess with a situation like that and claim it's their own. I really don't understand that. And if such a situation arises, you know, understand that there will be consequences like a lawsuit, okay? I, I never thought I had to explain this, okay? I think a child knows that shit, but literally uh, recently I had to kind of like include that, all right? And understand I also co do coach coaches, but I'm not going to hand over my program and say, just because you spend a month with me in coaching as a coach, you're allowed to use my program. No, I have, I'm not hiring coaches yet, okay? I might, maybe, and then it's a different Different story. Yeah, you will be coaching the way I coach, but the way I train my coach, uh, the coaches that are in coaching with me, I misspoke, not mine coaches, but the coaches that I coached, I asked them to please develop their own style of coaching. I share with them everything that has worked for me. This is not to say you just get to take it and run with it. This is completely false, okay? Um, that is not how it works in any kind of like scenario, any kind of um, different profession. You are not allowed to use other people's work without consent. Okay, I hope I made that point clear. Um, please don't forget we have a live on Saturday at 3 p.m. We're going to be discussing magic spells, energy work, etc. <clears throat> to the best of my ability because usually it's best described and explained one-on-one. Uh, -on -one, but to the best of my ability, I, f I feel really inspired to talk about it. Now, guys, I really want to say a couple of things about the things that I shared with you. Okay, I wasn't like trying to tease you or anything um, with somebody um, being having been in coaching with me. She's no longer in coaching with me, thank God. Um, and, and her being out there and, you know, 
Look, when it comes to legal matters, um, I know that most of you understand. I can, I will not be speaking about it until the matter is resolved. Period. Okay. Um, I, th these things are resolved outside YouTube. Okay, so I'm not going to like take take it upon myself to um disclose somebody. Whoever knows who this person is, they they just know because there's only so many like bad apples out there. Okay, thank goodness, like really bad that. You know, just basically um, people find out really quick. It's a pretty small community, okay, um, I come to realize. And people know um, each other. Um, when somebody new shows up and starts their channel, like everybody's checking each other out. There's a reason, parenthesis here, okay, why I've gone like over a year now on YouTube and I never had one situation where, <clears throat> excuse me, a coach reached out to me and said, Oh, what are you doing? You're copying me or this sounds like me. Never, not once did that ever happen. In fact, the opposite is true. All of my clients tell me how unique I am and how I don't sound like anybody else. And this is on purpose. Why? Because first of all, I've done enough research not to sound like somebody else. Okay. I've um, created my own program. I've created my own opinions, my own way of explaining, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. <laughs> but most importantly, I respect myself enough as a coach and as a human being, period, <clears throat> to show up and give something to the internet, the YouTube, the people of the world, as it were, that isn't already there. Okay, I'm of a believer, I have a lot of, you know, other businesses, and I'm, a, I'm of a belief that if you're creating something, it better be something new. Okay, something that isn't there yet. In other words, whatever market you're in, you're finding where there is a gap. You're looking for how you can be helpful in that gap. Okay, that doesn't exist right now. Otherwise, you're joining the crowd of like 90% of the people, if not 99% of the people. And that's a fucking waste. Okay, that's a recipe for disaster in my book. All right. Now you can sound like a lot of other people, but yet you can bring something unique. My situation in life is that I never want to be like anybody else. Okay, like this morning, somebody asked me, I I'm working on some kind of situation. And they asked me, how would you like to replicate what your competitors are doing? I'm like, I would never want to replicate anything what my com so called competitors are doing. I'm like, that is not the language I speak, darling. I don't think you understand. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, funny moment right there. And so essentially, I wanted to go over actually how to what to look for in a good coach. Okay, please don't ask me any more questions about this person. Please don't make me regret of coming out and saying it. Okay, I just really wanted to put it out there. There, are, These people exist. And so if you're on my channel, you're familiar with my videos, it'll take you like three seconds to recognize that person. Okay, but will I come out and say her name until I feel, you know, like it's the right time? No, I won't. So relax, please. And so here's what I would look in a coach. Okay, a great coach. Um, if you're looking for one, because somebody commented on, on my, uh, video and it actually inspired me to record this. Like everybody's saying, um, bad things about other coaches and you don't know who to trust. Well, not really true. Um, I only, um, s express specifically, uh, things about certain coaches that I'm not going to be involved in a lawsuit. So that's a different situation. Um, i.e. Abraham Hicks. I think she's full of shit. Um, um, what, what's her name? Ingram with her 10,000 uh, affirmations. I really don't get that shit. Okay. There are many others who I don't remember the names of um, that, you know, were brought up <clears throat> in my coaching by other people. And I can, on, on my hand, I can count the people that I really love. And here they are. Ready? Bentinho Massaro, uh, Frederick Dodson, okay, Joe Dispenza, obviously, okay, James Lipton, um, Greg Braden, um, who else? Um, obviously Neville, but that's a little bit too easy and it's not contemporary. So you get the point, all right? I don't even pay attention to anybody who's like, you know, not like big time, to be honest with you. And even then, <clears throat> I make sure I always, my rule of thumb, again, is that if I read something, if I listen to Bashar, obviously, okay, almost forgot Dari Lanka, <clears throat> I make sure that I give it my own understanding, that I make it my own in 
meaning okay they don't that I don't claim that this is mine but meaning that I kind of like put it through the prism of Anna's understanding the way that I would interpret it okay the way that I would explain it to somebody else because everybody understands things differently I just have my own perspective and my my own way of interpreting things and explaining things okay that's what makes me super unique and for those of you who resonate with me great so <clears throat> you know, before I get carried away, let me tell you what to look for in a coach. Okay, f first things first that I really have to stress here, it really doesn't fucking matter how many fucking subscribers this person has. Really not. And I'm not just saying that because, you know, whatever, by kind of like comparison, I have less subscribers than somebody else or somebody... No, it really is not the measure of the person's... Um, ability to coach of their practice even because a lot of people practice outside YouTube okay very successfully so YouTube is not the end on end of all the situations this is just YouTube all right so a lot of people have very successful careers outside YouTube yeah if you can imagine all right <laughs> so the count on YouTube truly doesn't matter why people constantly buy subscribers this is true in every case whether that's Instagram Facebook or YouTube alike so you know it's maybe it's a like hundred thousand subscribers but maybe it's a hundred thousand subscribers bought from I don't know Bangladesh somewhere and none of these people are actually real all right so don't go by that Go by your intuition, go with your intuition, go with what resonates with you. You have a sense of intuition, don't you? So turn it on for a second and listen to the person's content and see for yourself. Don't just trust uh, somebody else's review, which, you know, I could come up with some reviews from my past clients galore, but what does it really mean? It's first of all, uh, there's a lot of confidential uh, situations going on in my coaching because I've coached well-known people, famous people, people who are very wealthy. They don't give a shit about like putting their name out there. And if I put like Peter V, then, you know, people might think I'm lying. So I don't win either way. So f the best thing is to make up your own mind. OK, does this person resonate with you? Do they seem like they're truthful? OK, uh, do, do they talk like just about everybody else or do they have their own spin on things? Do they have their own like point of view? <laughs> Very important. Their own point of fucking view. If you sound like the 99 percent of the rest of the people, I would be wary about this person, no matter how many fucking reviews she or he has, no matter how glitzy the, the website looks and all this fucking jazz or how, however many subscribers. OK, number two is how does the person um, e express their views on their channel? Are they claiming that something is taboo? Are they claiming that some things are impossible? Are they making things more complex than they need to be? Do they go in like Abraham Hicks into a 30-minute fucking discussion about how to manifest money? Very important questions to ask. <laughs> Seriously, though, Seriously, it's not like I didn't try. In fact, my first um, I remember when I was, I don't know, 22, 21, some, somewhere around there. My first book that I read ever metaphysics was Abraham Hicks's book. And it made me nauseous. I swear to God, it made me nauseous because I was like, I'm, I know I'm reading something. But it's as if I don't, I, I, like, I don't speak English because it just goes around in circles without a fucking point, okay? And I gave her the same um, try years later when I was watching these seminars and this and that, and the same feeling came over me. I'm like, I am about to be nauseous. I don't understand what the fuck she's saying. It's as if she's reading some kind of script that she's memorized and she just cop copies and pastes it, and it has none to do with what the person just asked. Like, literally not some kind of a mysterious fucking vortex, which, why does it, <clears throat> how, how does this fucking help you? <laughs> 
this fucking vortex of creation. Oh my fucking God. Don't even get me started. I can give like an hour le lecture on how much she sucks. And she's lying about the channeling. I just know she is. I, I know what it's like to channel. She is not fucking channeling because exactly because she sounds like a broken record. Okay. A good coach also evolves their message right so again very important doesn't just repeat what everybody's talking about right so you you'll go on youtube and one of my clients actually many clients told me that the reason to me the reason i chose you is because you sound unlike anybody out there because everybody just sounds the same i'm like thank you yes i know why do people do that to themselves Okay, and so that usually means they don't have their own ideas. They just copy and paste somebody else. You'll go on YouTube and all these so-called coaches, they basically are, you know, even titling their videos the same, talking about it in the same way. All these things are red flags to me. Okay, <clears throat> and when we go into the taboo situation, again, had so many different um, people in my coaching who literally, women in particular, who have um, been rejected by a coach out there. I don't know who in some cases, but <clears throat> have been rejected by a coach because the woman would be in love with, like, let's say, with a married man, or the SP uh, left her and went and got married to somebody, and she would want him back. Now, I'm not going to go into the discussion of um, <clears throat> the situation, but essentially, if you know my teachings with parallel realities, everything is possible. Okay, but to some people, this is immoral, all right? And they would not even accept, not, not even a conversation with such a person, okay? I believe that everything is possible and you don't have to hurt anybody, okay? You don't have to steal anybody from anybody or anything <laughs> for that matter. Um, everything is possible. You can go about it in a very, very um, harmonious very benevolent way. You don't need to fuck anybody over ever. And I mean ever, ever, ever. Okay. But the thing is, it, it, these kinds of cases get rejected all the time because they, they just straight out tell people, this is taboo. I'm not going to help you. And you shouldn't even dream about it. All right. Another one, and then this is my favorite, okay, one of my favorites, and because I know for a fact of facts that this is fixable, if somebody's a narcissist, so-called narcissist, um, in a relationship that this is unchangeable, totally changeable, done it myself many times, had my clients do it in their, um, uh, in their own lives and in their experiences many times. So it, it's not that there are narcissists, you created a, a narcissist in your life. The idea would be ex to examine which was, um, well, I'm just giving you the answer right here, right now. <laughs> it's very easy. Wh who was the initial narcissist in your life and why you haven't forg forgiven that person yet? And, you know, the why is very simple because there was a lot of drama, trauma, panorama around it. But the fact is you keep reproducing it. So but it's totally fixable, okay? But some people will tell you, forget it. Don't worry about it. It's impossible. So saying something impossible is another red flag, all right? For me, my only thing is that if somebody was abusive towards you, I just gently say, look, maybe, I don't know how you feel. This is my conversation with the client, for example. But if you feel like the memories are too, you know, in your face, maybe a good idea is just to forgive this person and don't worry about it, right? But it's always, I never tell people what to do in my coaching. I just suggest, it's not my job to tell people what to do. I suggest, I can strongly suggest even, but ultimately this is your life. I'm, I'm in no position to tell you what to do. I'm only an advisor, like a uh, guardian angel kind of deal. So I know in my life, I've had um, two abusive people, um, and um, I would never, you know, go back to such. I would never want to recreate somebody like that. For me, it was important to heal and then create somebody um, who would treat me really nicely. And But, I mean, the journey was long, but it was worth it. In no shape or form would I ever go back to such a thing because the, the damage was already done. So this could be you today. Other than that, anything is possible. And it's still possible to change that person. My point is that you may not want to go back to that person, okay, after you've healed and worked on yourself. Another very important point, okay, 
Does the person talk about their personal life? Have they produced miracles in their life? Do they come up with literal examples from their life without giving giving away everything, intimate details in this and that? I understand internet is crazy, la la la. Okay, I have I had stalkers. Okay, at my home, um, and I my channel had just like been up for whatever six months or whatever the fuck it was at that point, and all of a sudden I had stalkers. Right, so I know how crazy people are, but essentially, what you're interested in is this person manifesting in their own life. And what kind of qualities of manifestations? Is their relationship healthy and together, right? Or is their life a complete shit show and they have nothing to teach you or offer you, right? So if you're just kind of like reciting Neville Goddard, which a lot of people are doing, or, uh, you know, working on affirmations with you, oh my God, I can just fall asleep to that. Um, or kind of like, um, I mean, I don't know what some coaches are doing, seriously, like, um, just selling their time hourly and um, some kind of emails and text pack packages. That is not coaching. Just understand going into coaching, it needs to be that you can get access to your coach on a regular basis. And it's not a fucking text or an email. You are literally either on the phone with them, on Zoom sessions with them, or, you know, a package like for somebody on the go, which is very popular in my coaching, audio exchange. People have different, you know, schedules sometimes, right? Some people work at night, some, you know, life is crazy, all right? So, but you're literally in touch with your coach on a regular basis. And many people can get a hold of me in between these sessions or in between these audios where we're going uh, over the, the, um, the coaching program. So this is coaching. Um, send calling uh i mean being on the phone with your coach and now we're here and now we're there is not fucking coaching it's a therapy session and not even a very productive one right so you really need to go into this with the understanding that you are going in into a program where you will be uh, asked to deliver results this is my point of view this is my strong point of view okay a phone call here a phone call there isn't going to solve shit for you. And you will continue being, you know, frustrated. Just literally will not solve anything for you. I don't care how many fucking videos you will watch. I don't care how many online courses you, you've done. There is nothing, nothing, nothing that will ever substitute a one-on-one -on -one coach assistance. Literally nothing. You will achieve such progress um, in a situation like that that will literally like spin your mind, spin your head. Also, is the coach pushing you to do better? Or is just an endless fucking conversation about the same thing over and over? Also, like a therapy session. Are they, are they propelling you towards your dream life? Do they encourage you to push yourself? Do they bother asking you what kinds of goals you have? Not just talk about the drama, trauma, panorama, which is an important part, don't get me wrong. But are they pushing you towards the vision that you have for yourself or should have for yourself? And if you don't, are they questioning that situation with you? And are they inspiring you then to come up with certain kind of goals? Okay. And lastly, I really just have to say this. When you're looking for a coach, okay, you really need to examine what state you're in. And this is very important. This is the part that you need to show up with, right? The kind of state you're in, and I really mean, what I really mean this, you can be going through shit uh, right now. You can have problems and this and that. The idea though, the way to pick a good coach for you is to be open-minded. So a coach is not your friend. It's a professional who's there to fix your situation. And if you don't let them do that, when you put up like barricades or if you get offended at the truth or if you're ultra sensitive person or if you can't take guidance, you can't take suggestions and basically you're, you're just kind of like so comfortable in your dysfunction, this process will not work with no kind of coach. No kind of coach. It, truth be told, between you and I, okay, between me and the world, <laughs> the more open-minded you are, the people that I work with best, you have to have, like, once you've established that this person resonates with you, this coach resonates with you, you really need to come in with open arms and trust. That way you get the most out of your coaching, 
Okay, so go back to point number one. Does this person resonate with you? But upon concluding that, it, that this person definitely speaks my language, they explain things the way I like to be, you know, explained to and da, 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 their personality, all the stuff, it's clicking with me. Uh, you going into the coaching then with trust and understanding this person is on your side. Okay, and you cannot put up put up barricades. You cannot resist my methods. You cannot, you know, not show up with the homework and all this jazz because this will just delay, if not, you know, accomplish nothing. In other words, you're just as important of a participant in this method, uh, in in this process rather, um, as am I, as is any coach. Okay, the coach is not showing up to sprinkle fairy dust over you they're there knowing what can be done if you let them do it and that is a very important and powerful point to keep in mind so in other words you be the judge of whether you need a therapist at this point um, of your life or you really need a coach who really can make a difference in your life for the rest of your life but you need to let them do their job and not get start getting offended or not get super sensitive and this and that. Not saying that, um, you know, I'm disrespectful or rude to my clients. Never have I ever been rude or disrespectful. In fact, the other way around, I've had to tolerate um, being spoken to in a very disrespectful manner at times and being, um, you know, mistreated. Um, I did not like it, uh, but nevertheless, that it doesn't discourage me because for the majority, like 99% of my clients are fabulous people. But the thing is, these kinds of situations, first of all, I don't tolerate them. You'll drop out of my coaching in five seconds. It's in my agreement. Um, but secondly, you really need to determine if this is what I was talking about, the state you're in right now, if you can, if you can handle somebody giving you the truth. Because the truth will always set you free. And sometimes people are not ready to hear the truth. But ultimately, my very strong opinion and in my professional opinion of eight years, what works best is if the person trusts the coach, trusts the coach completely and um, takes um, the suggestions to heart. And at, at the very least, you know, even in baby steps, considers them and works on them. Okay, so that's the part that you have to show up with and you have to want to be um, eager for the change to come through in your life. In conclusion, if you're looking for reviews and subscribers and um, all that glitzy shit, you're looking at the wrong thing. What you really need to take a look at is the person themselves, the coach, the teachings. Do they sound like everybody else or do they actually have a point of view? Um, do they resonate with you? Do they have a strong message? Do they talk about their own personal life and examples from their own personal life? Okay. And does their message make you feel empowered? That's a really good rule of thumb. If, if the message left you empowered, that you can do absolutely anything, which is ultimately the truth. And there's no such thing as, you know, you fucked something up. Uh, I don't believe this. I can go on forever, but essentially if a coach tells you th if you did this, you fucked this up and th these are the five things not to do, this is a bullshit coach, okay? Um, nothing is ever fucked up. Everything is possible. So you need to walk away with the feeling of this coach knows what they're talking about because if they do, they will leave you empowered with your unlimited and everything is unlimited, okay? Because that is actually the truth. Um, of the universe. And last but not least, pay attention to how people talk. Okay, again, going back to Abraham Hicks and so many others on, on the internet, you can tell if the person is talking off the cuff, or if the person is literally reading a fucking script that they've prepared beforehand. That's another telltale sign. And you can tell if somebody's reading or have something memori memorized or literally sitting in front of the camera and their eyes are going back and forth and because there's a script somewhere. You don't need a fucking script if you're a good coach. Okay, You just need a fucking camera or, or you need like a phone to record your voice because you've, if you've done the work, if you've done this long enough, you know what the fuck you're talking about. You don't need no fucking script. You are the script. 
All right. So I hope I've touched on some important points. I, I hope I explained this correctly. Um, next time you uh, will see me is during the live. Please prepare your questions. Again, we're talking about energy and magic spells and um, <clears throat> the, the power of God state. Okay, I'm going to cover that as well. How to separate your energy from other people, especially if you're an empath. But essentially, uh, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell if you're not already subscribed so you don't miss the live. And on this channel more than ever, this is my passion project. I have a lot of other businesses, but I'm very passionate about <clears throat> helping people. And this was my sole reason of starting this channel because I, I probably will never stop doing this um, unless something happens and I need to start like, you know, hiring coaches. And I don't know. I might, I might not. Um, but the point is, is that this is my passion project and you should take advantage of it because in this capacity, this information, in this clarity that I um, offer literally does not exist anywhere. It really just doesn't. Okay. Not because I'm bragging on me. I've just done research for the last 15 years. I've done the research and I continue being um, convinced of what I'm saying is true. Okay. All the information from me, again, is below. If you need to book my coaching or an hour with me, um, please make sure you sign the coaching agreement, uh, whichever one you book, if, an, if it's an hour or monthly, get in touch with me, um, and I'll see you on Saturday at 3 p.m. Thank you so much. Until next time. Ciao, ciao.